Hello, out there and out in the world. Uh, <laughs> this is off to a good start. I'm not exhausted at all. Uh, so uh, I'm supposedly Eric Darling with uh, Eric Darling Data, because no one else will have me. Uh, and I'm going to talk about something new, brand new. I'm sorry if this is going to make this video seem dated at some point, but brand new thing that dropped in CTP 3.1 for SQL Server 2019. And it is the option to optimize your index for a sequential key. Now, when I first saw this, I thought it was uh, a replacement for the uh, ascending key trace flags and issues that you know used to come up in SQL Server where if you had uh, a key that was always ascending like counting from 1 to 10 and beyond or a date that was in sequence that started you know at a first of the whatever and ended at the something else of the whatever uh, that SQL Server makes some pretty bad guesses pretty bad off histogram guesses if your stats didn't update and it's not that it's not it has nothing to do with that this is to address something known as uh, the last page contention issue and what that means is that you if you have an ascending key so it is sort of related if you have an ascending or I just, it could be descending to de ascending or descending key and you are and you constantly find yourselves adding uh, high frequency rows to the very end of the index, that last page in the index is always going to be under contention because everything is going to want to write to it. Now, uh, this is a brand new feature and I have no idea how it works internally, but I'm able to observe a little bit of the effects by looking at weight stats during uh, execution. So I have a table here that I designed to absorb some writes. It's uh, based on the votes table in the Stack Overflow database, and I've just renamed it votes insert. And this is the option to turn uh, optimize for a sequential key either on or off, right? I'm going to turn it off to show you at first. And this is the procedure that I'm going to run uh, using RML utilities, OStress and RML utilities. I'm going to use this to run uh, this is the procedure I'm going to be running in a big loop. Uh, I'm going to be running 150 threads on it. Uh, that should be 150 because when I do 200 threads, for some reason, I run into some weird stuff. So I'm going to make that 150. And if I'm going to do it 2,000 times. So we're going to end up with 150 times 2,000 rows in the table by the time we're done. Uh, now, this is uh, the store procedure. It's boring. Or I'm just inserting some literal values. I don't want to do one. I don't, I, I'm trying to start as simple as possible so as I do not confuse things down the line. So this is going to be my procedure, and this is going to be the table that we start with with optimize for sequential key off. Now, uh, I'm going to get some stuff ready. I'm going to get... Oh, that's clear screen. <laughs> Uh, ter terribly unprofessional of me. Uh, so this is the RML uh, command that I'm going to be running. And over here, I'm going to be using SP Blitz first, the open source store procedure over at firstrespondekit.org to measure what we do for a 20 second window. All right. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do is hit F5 to kick this off. And then I'm going to switch right over to this window, and I'm going to kick off uh, the command to start running things. So hopefully this all goes very... I've been practicing, so hopefully this goes very smoothly. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So this is off and running, and Blitz First is measuring what we've got going on. And this is going to run for, if I remember collect correctly, about 15 or so seconds. Uh, that's why I have 20 seconds on the Blitz First sample, just so that when... <laughs> When this runs, I, I have a little bit of padding time in case I screw something up terribly uh, or, I don't know, something goes devastatingly wrong. Now, in that 20-second window, let me blow up Management Studio so we can get a little bit more information here. When I look at what happened in there, we have 1,500 seconds of write log weights. We have 240 seconds of page latch EX weights, 35 seconds of latch SH, and 20.6 seconds of latch EX. This all took about 17 seconds to run. Cool. Good. We can see that the Stack Overflow's log file got a whole bunch of writes to it in that, in that time. 162 megs were written there. Sweet. All right. Now, let's go back and look at what happens when we turn on uh, the optimize for sequential key option. Turn that on. 
All right, so we're going to drop our table and start from start from scratch again. And we're going to run the same exact stored procedure because I am far too lazy <laughs> to, to do anything, to have like two copies and try and switch and all that stuff. So uh, we're going to do the same exact thing. Now, this option is turned on now. So we recreated with the table with this turned on. So we're going to see if there's any difference in, I don't know, time or weight stats or any of that good stuff. So we're going to hit F5. Oh, wait. We're going to get our command ready. We're going to execute and then run this. So now this is often running with uh, optimize for sequential key turned on. This is this is what is going to save everyone with last page content. I wish there was a better way to judge if you were hitting last page contention. Like I wish it, it and it makes me wonder a little bit why there isn't a uh, why this isn't the default. Like I wonder what this changes behind the scenes. Like I wonder what the trade off is that this isn't turned on immediately because this seems like kind of a no-brainer thing to have like because like, who's going to go out, like if you're having last page contention problems either you're very smart and you're able to judge that or you aren't <laughs> or you're not not that you're not smart you just don't know what's what's happening you don't know that you're having this problem so it'd be nice if there was something like internally that would look at in indexes that how they get inserted to and say hey you look like you're having some contention on the last page let me turn this knob for you I don't know, just something like that. You know, just something so that you can say it just runs faster. That's what I always like. So this finished, and this took uh, about 19 seconds. And uh, what we can notice here is that there was a dramatic downtick in page latch EX. That was around 256 seconds of it for the last 20 second sample. Now we're down to about 56 seconds. So this did improve. Another couple things that changed quite a bit are page lat or uh, sorry, uh, latch sh and latch ex. These are both way down. These were at like 30 and 26 seconds before. Now they're down to nothing. What went up, and the wall that I'm hitting with this is write log. Now, there's a few reasons for this. One, I mean, looks like let's start off. This is a VM that I'm running this in. So clearly, there's going to be some funkiness because VMs always bring some funk into the equation. It's Hyper-V, so there's not like, I mean, it's not terribly complicated, whatever I'm doing in here. It's a VM with eight cores, and it's sitting right now on my nice NVMe drive. I have a one terabyte NVMe drive that gets crazy fast speeds on just about everything. And this is the, that's the drive that this VM is sitting on. So I don't have a slow drive, but it is a VM sitting on that drive. The other thing is that this VM only has eight cores in it, so it only has two log writers. Whether that's the type of hardware that this, uh, this feature is aimed at is also up in the air. I don't have much, much bigger hardware that I could test it on. The server that this sits on has 12 cores. I don't think that really gets me much else as far as log writer goes, even if I gave it. So it's six physical cores, 12 with hyperthread. I don't think I even do much better if I had all 12 cores going. I'm already kind of weirdly oversubscribed, <laughs> giving it eight. Oh. I know. The hyper-threading gods are cruel, cruel people. Anyway, uh, so while this didn't go great for me, I am hitting that weird wall with write log. And if I had a bigger server to test it on, they got more log writers based on the Numenode core, whatever crazy equation they came up with, this might turn out better. There is a huge reduction in page latch, though. So that, that it does work. It it's probably just not working under my specific circumstances as well as it should. Um, if you're in a situation where, you know, you have more cores, more log writers, uh, maybe you're on physical hardware, there's a lot of things that could be different about this that would get us better write log throughput. Right now, that's the main thing that I'm hitting. Anyway, I, I am very hopeful that for the people who have this issue, this will be uh, a, a, good, a good feature for and that it will help solve that problem. I am look very much looking forward to learning more about how it works internally. I know that the I know that Pam Lahoud has promised a blog post about it as soon as some red tape gets cut. But I don't know. Pam, if you just want to send me what you were going to write, I'll put it on mine. We'll just pretend it never happened. All right? Let's pre pretend that pretend pretend that it was it was just me looking at things. I broke out windbag. I was really smart. I don't know. Whatever. I'll give you twenty bucks. All right, fifty bucks. All right, that's all I got. That's all I got.
Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. And I hope you're excited for this feature too. See you.